Good afternoon, everyone. We wanted to welcome you to our final closing session of our dual enrollment conference, DE21. Um, we hope that each of you um, this afternoon have had a wonderful conference experience, and we are super excited to bring to you our closing presenters. We couldn't have picked two better ones. Um, we have President Lee joining us from Bladen Community College in the eastern part of North Carolina, and she is accompanied by her partner there in Bladen County, the superintendent of schools there, um, Superintendent Atkinson. So with that, I am going to hand it over to our wonderful presenters um, to close us out. Thank you, Michelle. We, we are so honored to be here today and to speak to all of you. And I was looking at the agenda and it sounds like you've had a wonderful, wonderful full session. And I, I hope that Jason and I can just add something maybe tangible that you can add to that notebook that is, is just chock full of ideas and suggestions as you move forward with your own dual enrollment programs. And when Jason and I were trying to prepare for today, I had to think back on my career as a teacher and in and, and education. And I can remember, Jason, when I started learning about dual enrollment, I was a faculty member and this very enthusiastic administrator came into the room and said, we have this great opportunity. Starting in the fall, you are gonna have high school students and community college students in your classroom. And I think she was very unprepared for the reaction. I'm sure you were all thinking in your mind that we gracefully and enthusiastically received that message, but that was not the case. So fast forward several renditions of dual enrollment, and I am so thrilled now to be in an institution where we embrace the partnership. Our faculty love our high school students, and we are excited about always trying new things and trying to make our program even stronger and better. So before we delve in, Jason, I'd be curious about your first exposure to dual enrollment. Well, I actually was a high school senior whenever dual enrollment was first started. Thanks, now I, I feel I, old. I, <laughs> I can remember um, uh, our principal coming in and saying, we had this new program with the community college. It was actually, then you just had English and math were the two courses that you chose from. So that was my first experience. I remember then I said, well, you can take classes over the summer. So we took some classes uh, over the summer. That was just great. That was just the beginning of where we are now. It's amazing to believe that then when this, this first started that we were just had a couple of courses to really start this process and just to see where we are now to have high school students graduate with an associate's degree is just tremendous. Um, and to have the opportunity for certifications it's just a great opportunity now for our students, uh, even our students in our early college model, our students in traditional high school. It's just great. So we have thoroughly enjoyed the partnership with you all and being able to work with our students. And, and our kids are excited. When those that ride the bus from the high school over there, they can't wait for that bus to get there. They're ready to come to class. It's just something that I'd be on the college campus that really is something for them. But it really teaches them and prepares them for, for life after high school, whether that be the college path or the career path. And, and again, the, the beauty of the community college is they can come to you all after us um, and pursue any of those uh, avenues, which is great. So we were asked to speak because Bladen County has been so extremely successful with their dual enrollment program. So Jason and I brainstormed a little bit about why we've been so successful and I think we decided uh, that it really kind of boils down to our ability to collaborate, our ability to communicate, and then our ability to compromise. And uh, so, so we want to spend a little bit of time today telling you a little bit about our two areas, about the colleges and the, the, public, the public education system, and then talk to you about some specific examples that we feel like we've really done well and uh, we also feel like it's important to share with you some of the areas that we're working on right now as, as we continue to reimagine ourselves and try to make ourselves better. So Bladen Community College has a little over 1,100 students this semester. And uh, we do serve the public schools. We have some private schools here. We have a charter school here. And we do have an early college on our campus. 
Uh, most of our CCP students are college transfer and our CCP students make up about a third of our enrollment. So it's certainly a, a cohort that we want to serve and to serve well. Uh, what about the public school system? What's, what is your size? Uh, we have about 4,000 students. Uh, of those, of those 4,000, there's right at 1450 that are high school students uh, between East and West Bladen and the early college. We're excited this year that the early college has its first graduating class. Oh, I can't wait. So we it's going to be a great celebration. We are so excited. Uh, we have students um, that um, are in some of the uh, career path course course pathways, so cosmetology, uh, nursing, those things. Um, we're excited that some are doing the Associate um, of Arts. They're looking at uh, the various programs. They're you know, looking at this as a stepping stone to prepare for a four-year university. We've even had students that have completed two Associate's degrees at the same time, so uh, it's just been great. Those overachievers. They are. They are. Uh, but uh, we're excited that so many of our students take advantage of the programs here with the community college. Uh, but uh, this year, we, you know, we also have had the challenges with COVID. Uh, one thing I'd like to speak to is we have really worked together, uh, both the college and the school system, through all these COVID challenges and quarantines and exposures and all that. Uh, we've been able to maintain quality programs and con continue instruction for students, which has been So great. just so all of y'all know, Jason got here a few minutes early, and that's what we were doing. It was, we were putting our heads together saying, okay, what's working with our, our quarantining process and what's working with our COVID positive cases and keeping sure that everybody's up to date and still participating mm -hmm. in classes. And so it does go back to that constant communication. Right. But I think also one of the big reasons for our success is that we have a champion. I, it, it seems like the programs that really pull this off have somebody that bridges right. the areas really well. Mm -hmm. So, so when you say Sierra, look at this, yes. we've got champion, collaboration, communication, yes. compromise, oh, yes. and now Sierra, <laughs> uh, Sierra with a C. Uh, but I, so I think Sierra is a wonderful bridge, would you is. say? She is, and, and she does this outstanding job, and the high school students love her. Uh, just and the parents a, too. They do, just a great bridge. Uh, she makes sure they have everything they need to be successful and they have questions. I mean, she's always available. So she has been a tremendous uh, asset for our CCP programs. And and I so as we're talking about things that have worked, one of the things that makes Sierra such a great champion is that she is so honest with the students and with the parents and make sure that they really understand what they're committing to and what they need to do. And, and she has those courageous conversations that sometimes means, you know, maybe college isn't quite right for you right now because you want to do all of these other things. Uh, so, but I think another thing that has really helped us besides the way that we have a champion, we've worked through right. COVID. Uh, I think also this ability for um, students to start taking classes in the summer. Right. I, we do have a lot of students, as Jason mentioned, that they are committed to getting an associate degree and a high school diploma at the same time. Right. And they can't do that unless they go year round. That's so right. so I think that's been a real important. It has, and, and, it, and it, it speaks volumes when they have a desire to want to do that. You know, a lot of, sometimes well, I'll take my summer break and have some time, but they when's the class schedule coming out? What can I take this summer? They're just committed to complete the program. And that just says volumes for that opportunity to be able to, to work between both of our institutions. It's just been great. Mm, I think so too. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of the other reasons that we feel like we are successful is that it's not just me and Jason and Sierra, but we also have our local businesses involved. Right. So do you want to talk a little bit about the advisory committees? Yes, uh, we meet uh, on a regular basis. We have stakeholders from various uh, business businesses, uh, community organizations that serve, and they help us kind of look kind of look at what it is that the that is needed out in the career world. What are those skill sets they're looking for? Uh, what and they've been very gracious to even uh, volunteer their sites for internships. Uh, to be able to partner with us on some experiences for students. I think one thing that's important is, is having them at the table to have those conversations. And, you know, what are things that we're doing well? What are things that we can improve on? And this, this group is, is so amazing. They, they're at the, at the doorstep and say, look, we'll, we'll help you make these things happen. 
so whether that be financial support, whether that be you know personnel support, whatever it is, uh, but that that's been very powerful for us to help guide our programs. And we've had some changes to our program is based on feedback from our stakeholders, uh, and, and that's been tremendous. I think so too. And, and one of the other things that I think makes our relationship special and was a surprise to me as I started to really understand what we do here in Bladen County is that we do not compete with each other. I think there's a, a lot of different school districts and their community colleges that see this relationship as a bit of a competition. But I think because we've been able to provide some of these classes, it's really helped you mm -hmm. with your budget. It has. It has tremendously. Uh, and it helps us spread our opportunity to offer more classes to students. Uh, as, as a rural district, obviously, it's difficult to offer some of the higher level courses. Uh, sometimes, you know, even with AP having special certifications for teachers, uh, but, you know, a lot more students are taking advantage of um, courses through the community college and not doing as much with the AP route uh, or the international baccalaureate. They're doing more with the community college. And that says a lot and being able to partner with you all with, with the scheduling has been tremendous. Uh, I just want to share Dr. Lee and her staff have been very flexible with us. Obviously, we have one of our schools that travels quite a distance to get here in the morning. So we've you know, they've staggered class start times uh, that work well for us to make sure students get on campus. Uh, the, the college has been very flexible with us. Uh, we're running buses two or three times a day from the high schools to here. Uh, the early college is actually located here on BCC's campus. Uh, so we're, you know, for students that may not be, uh, could, could not have done that traditionally in a morning class, we've got bus coming back after lunch for afternoon classes. So usually in, in the past, it had been just, you know, we offered them in the morning, that was it. But now we're offering courses all day. We've even had some students take advantage of some evening courses. So it really has opened the door to, for the flexibility. So working together through these things, you know, soft and schedules challenge folks. But they bus schedules. They do, <laughs> uh, and trying to figure out all those. But I just, I just believe that that has been a tremendous part of our success is working together. And I Absolutely. just can't thank you all enough for the flexibility you all provide for our students too. Well, and, and and it was a, there's been a lot of learning over the years. So our classes don't start at eight o'clock. Our classes start at eight fifteen. It's a teeny tiny change, but you know, as you all and any of you are schedulers, it has a bit of a cascading effect on the schedule for the rest of the day. But it was a very easy tweak to be able to make in order to accommodate these students and those buses. Right. And uh, another thing that the county schools did for us is they've allowed us to have access to power school, which has been very powerful. Uh, again, it frees up time for the guidance counselors at the schools, and it allows us to communicate a little bit better. Uh, and then technology has right. been huge, I mean, especially with COVID as our classes were going back and forth and not being able to meet on campus, all of our public school students already had the, um, I guess not a laptop, but had the some Chromebooks. type of way to, to stay in touch with us. Right. So. And we've been, we've been very blessed uh, to have a one-to-one -one program. We've done it across um, all of our grade levels, uh, but especially for our high schools where that got started. Uh, and that's paid off so many dividends for students, uh, obviously with you all using Moodle and whatever LMS a community college may use. Uh, it's actually worked very well. Uh, we've even had some students that are on high school campus taking advantage of some online courses or blended. So the possibilities are endless. So it's just been great. Uh, we're really thinking out of the box about some different ways to do some different courses. And I'll tell you, that speaks volumes too to up and coming siblings or even some of the uh, adults in the family that say, you know, I want to go back and get my degree. So that they've seen this partnership, they've come on board. So again, that's a win-win. We're reaching families as well, Absolutely. even beyond just the students. So that's it's been tremendous. We we have a, a video that we're going to end with, and we're not at the end yet, so don't get excited. But it talks about one of those families that um, started. She was in our very first class, and uh, has gone all the way through, and now she's working on her pharmacy, her doctorate in pharmacy. Mm -hmm. But all of her uh, siblings have now attended right. through mm -hmm. the dual enrollment program. So you know, one of the things that, of course, we can say is a best practice is our reputation. And I think you all have worked very hard on that reputation that we have as well. And it's something that we work very hard to protect and make sure that that we are comfortable with what people are saying about right. what we're doing. Exactly. I, think I agree. And it's, it's and, I, and the community sees this partnership. 
we don't just say what we do people see it and that that means a and lot. they're proud of it as well they are very proud of it I, I, we were both participating in a strategic planning process for our county and the number one strength that came up as these community community members were talking to us was our dual enrollment program. Mm -hmm. They don't call it that, but they but they all know about it, and that was mm -hmm. that was very telling. You're right. exactly right. Mm -hmm. Well, so Jason, I think it's important that we don't paint too rosy of a picture. Right. <laughs> so, uh, what are some things that you feel like that that you know is top on your list that we can maybe play with and tweak to make our program even better? Well, I think some of the things we, we've, and a lot of these we already are working on, I think that are ever great. Obviously, uh, school calendars become a challenge. Uh, as Obviously. you all know, uh, for public schools, the legislation in place about starting on the Monday close to the 25th. Um, and that's been some, that's presented some challenges for students getting started, especially in the fall semester. Um, but one thing we were able to do here recently is we condensed our fall semester, uh, although it starts a week uh, around, it still starts at the same time. We're able to end that semester prior to going on for Christmas with exams. So when students come back after Christmas, we are starting the spring semester. So uh, that, that was one way for us to align that. We're still trying to work through. Hopefully we'll get some legislation to help us change that start date. Uh, that helps out a lot. Uh, one thing that always comes up too is we, we look at uh, textbooks and fees. Uh, yeah. and, that's, and that's something that we're actually looking into um, working with maybe with our county commissioners on to help um, align some of the uh, cost of textbooks. In our early college program, that's a part of the program that they have is provided. Uh, but we don't, we're trying to remove any barriers that students may have to attend courses, and we don't want textbooks and materials to be a, a problem for that. So, and so right now, mm -hmm. just so for the people who are watching, right. right now we do have some students that do have to pay for their textbooks. And we don't charge any of the fees on this end, but mm -hmm. we do ask that they pay for their textbooks. Uh, we all, I think we both have programs to help if there's right. a, a situation where a family cannot pay, but we both are very committed to perhaps having that taken care of across the board right. if at exactly. all possible. That would be great. Uh, one thing that we always work through um, is, you know, working with parents. We do have uh, a high migrant population here in our area. Uh, so we've got uh, our, our staff working uh, to help support those families and we're doing some work there collaboratively with, with the college on that. I think uh, another challenge too that I think uh, sometimes presents a problem is when we have students that are promoted early that can cause an issue in that summer semester of that, that graduation point. Yes. So you know, we're trying to look at some ways that we can advocate for those things uh, to be done um, a little better. And of course, some of these things do take legislative support and we're always advocating and uh, our representation here is always make, being a sounding board for Bladen County and, and for all of our community colleges across the state. Uh, but I think there's, you know, that's just a few things. You know, obviously, we talk about buses working out, but we, just like everyone else, if you've seen some statistics, uh, we're having some shortages, and bus drivers is one of those areas. So, you know, that's, that's presented a new challenge for us that we have kind of worked through. Um, Every so, day. Yes. Um, you know, there's always a need to, especially coming off of COVID-19 and the social-emotional aspects of that. Uh, one thing that we obviously want to do is have more staff dedicated to uh, guidance and advising and um, we need that on our end as yeah. well we we have sierra that i've already mentioned and uh, then typically we have another career coach but um we we definitely could have more people that would make that wonderful and we we take pride on getting to know our students and know them very well and their families as well uh, but uh, it just wouldn't hurt to have more resources right. there exactly and we're always looking for you know different types of programs and ways to recognize students and mm -hmm. things that we want to do, uh, even if it's not even necessarily graduating a program, but completing a program, some kind of pathway completion. So we even try to think about ways we can honor them at the high school level in terms of, you know, is there a special core they can have at graduation and what a seal on the diploma. I know you all think about some things you all are doing. We are, we are, absolutely. So any way we can recognize students, and that really gives them that push to even go further. So, uh, you know, so even with these things that are sometimes challenges, we're finding ways to make them work. Uh, and, and even when it's things that we cannot change, we're advocating and we're getting support. You know, we're, you know, folks don't know about needs if we don't make them known. And I think that's, we've got some listening ears in our county and in our state yes. that are listening to some of these challenges. And I think they're going to help us with those too. I think so too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I don't know, I think I shared some information with you, Jason Pryor. 
but and perhaps y'all have even talked about it in your sessions already. But it, I saw in an article that was written by Megan Walk and Russ Allwell that there's a return on investment for our communities for every dollar invested in this early college and then mm -hmm. dual enrollment, you get $15 in return. So if you're thinking about it from that perspective, from that business model and trying to think how to sell it, for us, that's a that's an incredibly easy sell. I mean, we're in a tier one county, we have no money. And but to know that 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 commitment mm -hmm. is going to just really pay off. Uh, the, there's a, a young man that you'll hear from later when we um, show our video that had planned to go into law enforcement. He had planned to leave the community. He enrolled in dual enrollment. He was actually at one of the charter schools here locally and found his passion and is thrilled. And he uh, is planning to start his own business. So I use oftentimes, I think having this opportunity to interact at an earlier right. age may open some doors that some of our young people didn't even know existed. Right. Uh, so as, as we do uh, wrap up our, our little 30 minute conversation with you today, and we wanna give a little bit of time for any feedback you might have. I would love to uh, just share one thought with you and I, and I think it's important because I've, I've been um, fortunate enough to have been at private universities, public universities, small community colleges, large community colleges, medium community colleges. And I will tell you, every place is unique. Every place is different. So as we're sharing things that have worked really well for us, I want to challenge you to uh, make it your own and uh, realize that your community, you may need to make a few uh, modifications to what works for us for it to be really effective for you. And uh, with that in mind, if you have not had a chance to read Adam Grant's latest book on Think Again, I would really encourage you to do that. And he really talks about how you everything's just constantly evolving. And that's one of the tenets that we've really embraced here is that what we have is working today, but it, it's not gonna work tomorrow. We, we've got to adapt, we've got to evolve. Our stakeholders, their businesses are evolving and uh, what they need from our graduates is constantly changing. So I just wanna share with you, he, he wraps up uh, one of his chapters and he says, it takes humility to reconsider our past, doubt to question our present decisions and curiosity to reimagine our future. So as, as y'all are wrapping up all of the things that you've learned this uh, last day and a half or two days, I would hope that you are leaving with some humility, some doubt, and a lot of curiosity about what you can do to make your communities better. So why don't we show, show everybody our video? Yes. And uh, then Michelle, if there's any questions that you would like for us to answer, anything that you'd like us to do, we'd be glad to do that. BCC Blake Community College in May of 2016 with both an Associates of Art and an Associates of Science. And then shortly after in June, I graduated from East Bladen High School. And from there, I went to Campbell University where I did um, pre-pharmacy and clinical research for two years. And then after the first two years at Campbell, I was accepted into pharmacy school. And so now I am in my fourth year of pharmacy school at Campbell and will graduate in May of 2022. To talk about a couple of the benefits of the program, the first thing that was really nice for me is that I was fortunate enough that in the seventh grade, I knew that I wanted to be a pharmacist. So from that moment, I started planning my classes and my future towards that. So my sophomore year, whenever the career and college promise program became an option is when I really started um, looking into what classes were required for me at pharmacy school or to get into pharmacy school. So from there, it was nice because classes like chemistry, 
and history could count for both my Campbell University education and associate's degree and my education at East Bladen High School. Um, going into high school knowing that I wanted to be a pharmacist and even if I had decided not to be a pharmacist, if I had, I knew I wanted to do medical. So that was, either way, I was going to be in school for a long time. So knowing that pharmacy would have been an eight-year program, getting two years out of the way at BCC led to me being able to only do two years of undergraduate study at Campbell and was accepted into pharmacy school after what was my senior year at Campbell. So from there, I got into pharmacy school, which is four years, and this year, or next year, May of 2022, I will graduate from pharmacy school at Campbell University in six years, as opposed to eight years. One of the benefits of the program is something that I didn't even realize at the time that I was in it, but after about my first couple months at Campbell University, I realized how much it helped me. The fact that you could have a transition in between what a normal high school class would be and a university class was very helpful. The rigor of BCC was higher than high school, so it aided in that transition to a university. I first came to BCC to uh, really I just came to take a college class. But when I found, found out about the college career promise program, I, I kind of like got happy because uh, I always wanted to be a master electrician when I was younger. And uh, when I found out that BCC had that program that I could be in, I, I just got over enthused. When the, um, I first started the program, I was really scared because I didn't know anything about electrical, even though that's what I always wanted to do. I didn't really know anything about it. And uh, it was it was hard, but I uh, I learned to push through, and it taught me a lot. I've learned the basics of electricity and the Ohm's law, many things. And what I plan to do with all that is I uh, I plan to take with my knowledge from here, you know, because it's a foundation. I plan to take it from there and go up to start my own business and become a master electrician. They probably asked me to be a part of this video because I always tout how much money uh, the dual enrollment program uh, can save a family. Again, knowing that Miller wanted to go to pharmacy school and Campbell's a great school, but it's not inexpensive. You're talking about, about $45,000 a year. So by getting uh, two years of credit at Bladen Community College and entering Campbell as a junior, she saved our family $90,000 right off the bat there. My name is Sierra Griffin and I am the college and high school programs coordinator for Bladen Community College. Um, and so when people think about CCP, uh, they think about college transfer, but CCP is also CTE. So there's the college transfer side and there's the career and technical education side. Now, some of the benefits that are not immediate that don't come to mind um, include college experience. Students are gaining quality college experience while they're in high school before they tr transition into the real world. Um, students also get that college exposure, so they learn the expectations of them um, from a higher education institution. And then finally, when students come through our program and as they get ready to transition out into the world, if they are in the college transfer side, they are prepared to uh, perform on the university level. But also if they are on the career and technical education side, we prepare them to go out into the workforce and earn a quality livable wage. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee and Dr. Atkinson for sharing your successful partnership. I think this is a really great way to close out the conference. Um, and thank you to all the attendees for joining us and participating in our conference. We really appreciate it. We think we've had a great time over the last two days. I do just want to point out a couple of things. Um, all of the sessions for the conference have been recorded. 
and will be available on the conference website for the next 90 days. So if you didn't get the chance to see every session you wanted to, there's still time. Um, also, we have a survey for the conference that's located on the main page of the conference and we'll also send you an email about it. We plan to have another of these conferences in 2023, so we'd really appreciate your feedback so that we can make that conference even better than this one. Um, so thank you for joining us and we hope to see you again in 2023, if not sooner. <laughs>